We, we look at the world and we see that the world points to a creator. And one of the evidences of that is the idea of contingency. Now your argument was, well what if it's infinite? But my point to you is, that if it is infinite, you lose the concept of time. Go on Steve, sorry. Why? Did God need Mary's womb for nine months? A great question. I know enough, not from the mighty Steve. <laughs> so the question was best answered by our father in faith as an atheist, who said that that which is not incarnate is not redeemed. The incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ was essential to the redemption of humanity. God was redeeming us in our flesh. He was allowed. What does redeeming mean? It was making, it means to be, as it were, to be brought out of its debt, to be ransomed. Yes, exactly. Human beings, because of our sin, Steve, have been cut off from God. We don't know God. We can't be in communion with God. And because our nature is filled with sin, we have no basis to so enter there's into it. another way of putting it, that God felt he could best communicate with us and make us right or whatever by coming to us in our own form. It is the best form of communication, yes. Because the thing is, if I communicate to you in Latin and I say something like Confitio Dei Omnipotenti et Vobis Fretres... wasn't multilingual. Right? No, no, yeah, he was. He spoke was Greek and Aramaic and, and Hebrew. 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 Yeah. So, so let, 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 let me answer your question. Muhammad, A bit more than Muhammad. Definitely more than Muhammad, who could barely speak Arabic by the sounds of it. So, because Muhammad borrows non-Arabic words and puts them in the Quran, he borrows Syriac words. So a pure Arabic Quran actually has Syriac words in it. So, let me let me let me come to your point. If I commune, no, 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 I haven't. The, the fuller answer is the more glorious. You just want to move on. <laughs> so let, 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 me, let me let me. No, he's explained it. In understandable terms. Good. So what's the point of making it richer? That's a waste of words, isn't it? That's a waste of words. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going. Let, listen. If I communicate to you in Latin, I know you don't need to explain okay, it. Okay. And I or I communicate to you in Arabic, you're always going to be at the mercy of the translator, like the Arab and the the, the Muslims want to make us all at the mercy of the Arabs. But if you never speak a word to me and a car is going to hit you and I push you out of the way and I take the hit myself. You don't need to know much about me to know what I've done for you. I've communicated something selfless to you, self-giving towards you. And this is a story that you can then tell in every language because it's translatable. And so when our God becomes a man, he becomes a man so that his story can be told in every language, in every tribe, and in every tongue. So that a confederacy of the church can be drawn from every race of equals worshipping God together. Perfect. Unlike in Islam, where we are called to be the slaves and the subjects of the Arabs, Ooh. bowing to an Ooh. Arab city, yes. copying an Arab man, worship taking on their cultural norms and traditions. So our God is a God for the world. Are there no cultural traditions of Christianity? Yes, many, from many different nations. Because those nations, and this is why the incarnation is important, because the incarnation is about the redemption of humanity. So why did Jesus not travel the world? He didn't need to. Why not? He sent the apostles. The apostles traveled the world? Well, Thomas got as far as which, India. Which one came here? None of them. Well, not the first apostles. But we Christians, exactly, exactly. We Christ the, the concept of the apostle is one who is sent. So if a church sends someone, they are an apostle. So we English had our apostles. They came and they taught us monotheism, the worship of the one true God, to not worship the trees and the sun as our ancestors did. You're not pagan, Steve. The trees give us oxygen, the trees give us carbohydrate. You gave us the they trees. are my sources of life. Do you, do you worship those things? I respect them. I respect I them. I have awe for them. I respect them. Do you know why I respect them? They give you oxygen and carbohydrate. No, because they were made by my creator. They, these ones absorb the pollution for us. They, they, these, I, I, these things are not in conflict. 
I respect them because they create, they're given to me by my, my creator. Basically, I, I, if you want to use the word worship, I will worship real things and real things that support my life. Is being real? Obviously. Right. So do you think that all being is contingent? Contingent what, on one another? On, on different things, yeah. Oh, of course. Yes. Right. Yeah. Do you think that you can have an infinite line of contingency? Probably not. No, which means that all being has to be grounded in some other reality, agreed? What does that mean? What does that statement mean? It means that, so basically what it's saying is that all being as we can feel it, see it, touch it, hear it, has to have had a start, a creator, wait, that is not the thing it's created. Not the thing that it's created. There's yeah. got to be a base reality. There's got to be a base reality that is not the thing that comes from the base reality. Right. It's other to the base reality. This is what we call God. Now, do you agree that my argument is logical? Calling it God is... Yeah, we can argue about that later, but is my argument logical? But before one thing, something else came, yes. That's... Yeah, but then that, that, that <laughs> chain of contingency can't be infinite. And so there has to be some other thing. Uh, I mean, to be honest, that's beyond our current understanding, <coughs> isn't it? It is, it is, it is, it is, this, the logic is not beyond our understanding. No, but you can't apply common sense man on the street logic to things that are highly complex. Why not? Because neither of us, with all respect, are that intelligent. But my argument doesn't contradict any empirical you're, science. No, you're trying to simplify something that I don't think can necessarily be simplified. On what grounds? Because we are of limited mind. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that interlude. So my point to you is, my point to you is, bro, if, if all, all contingent things go back in, go back, they must have a starting point. But that starting point can't be the same thing as all these contingent things. Which means that A, the thing that started them... They wouldn't be contingent. Exactly. So that means that the thing that started them isn't in the chain of contingency. The thing that started them. Yeah, the thing that started them. Maybe it is infinite. And that's my point, it's beyond our... Uh... But, but when we talk about infinite, we've, we've, we reach other problems if we try to use that well, argument. Well, let's not use that word. Well, but the point is, you're using the concept. So regardless well, of what let's word... let's not use the concept. Great, I'm let's agreed. Just, let's just assume it could have gone on and on and the but that's, that, but then, but, entity could But that's infinite, Steve. On on. That's infinite. Well, maybe it was. Who knows? Yeah, we do know. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. And the How reason... Do we know? How do we know that there wasn't something for infinity in the past? The reason why... How do we know that? Right, because... Because if you have an infinite past, how do you get to the present? You can still move in time. But you've got an infinite past. Well, anything that infinite, you can move along that spectrum of infinity. But that means you? time. That means that time doesn't move. You can still move through something that is infinite. If you have an infinite A ruler past, that is infinite, infinite can still be moved along. Can it? If not? you have, the, my point to you is, if you have an infinite past. You have to uh, abandon the perception of time. Well, let's think about the ruler. If a ruler is infinite, you yep. can still move along the ruler. If the ruler is infinite, where's the beginning? Well, it's not, it doesn't have one. Exactly. So but how do you get to the present? Move along it. But my point to you is... Stick with the ruler. Do you perceive minute. time? You move along the ruler. Do you perceive time? And I perceive measurement along the ruler as well. Do you, do you, do you know what the, the... I think it's the third or the fourth law of thermodynamics is. Remind me. It's the idea that complex systems will move to less complexity over time. That is how we conceive well, of time. That, that's not how biology works. Yeah, it is. That's Com why we decay and die. Complexity evolves out of non complexity When you die, will that you... That is the fact of life. That is the, the fact of biology. And that's proof of God. Proof of evolution. Are you agreeing with me now? Because you just said the opposite. No. Well, you we, said simplicity comes from complexity. I've said the reverse. I'm saying the Which do you think is true? Thermodynamics shows that a complex system will fall into chaos. Well, that rule does not apply to biology. Agreed. It doesn't apply to that biology because we've got that spark of life, which is another proof of God's existence. Because it flows in the opposite so direction. I've demonstrated, which you've agreed, in the sphere of biology, complexity comes out of simplicity. And then we'll go back into, and then we'll go back into chaos. You rise out of... Does, does biological complexity come out of biological simplicity? Yes or no? Biological complexity comes out of biological simplicity, yes. Yes. But it does, why does that end in chaos? Because you die. 
That's not kale. And your atoms... That's nothing like kale. Your atoms, which is... How is dying like kale? Because you return it's to dust. It's natural process of life. Because your atoms will break into dust. And then be recycled by the fungus, by the beetle, exactly. by the hedgehog, and, by the, and the spark of life. So it's Steve. not just disappearing in dust. And the spark, exactly the that's spark. The, that's the interconnectedness right. that you refer to. I want, I want to show you something in the Bible. Life. I want to show you something in the Bible. Right. I've got you. I've no, got no, no. We're, we're we're actually on the same page. We're on the same page. You're, you're kind of agreeing with points that I'm making. Yes, because reverse. because because the narrative. You're, you're stating a fact, but the narrative in which you want to couch that fact is what I disagree with. Not the fact, but the narrative surrounding the fact. We agree on the fact, but we disagree about the narrative that surrounds the fact. So let me let me just put this... You are throwing in statements there, though, that... Let, like saying, like, chaos comes out of diversity, coming out of simplicity. The spark of life is a proof of God's existence. No. Because... You're being a bit random now, because you're throwing in random statements. So, well, in line I'm, I'm going to show you. The Genesis parable, the Genesis parable, because you know that I I'm not... I preferred it when Phil Collins was in it. Right? Yeah, the Genesis parable, not that Genesis, the other one. Right, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the so surface of the deep. How form of earth that's formless? What right, so, so this is the point. What the... It's meaningless, isn't it? No, no, what it's talking about is that the primordial state of the universe was one of chaos. Oh, so when it says form, it means order. Yes, what you're saying. exactly. You've got it. That's exactly what it means in the Hebrew. It means form. Now, my point to you is that if, I mean, firstly, the fact that Genesis is talking about something we know to be true, be it, even though it was beyond the time of Iron Age man to know, is another evidence for you that God is the one inspiring the scriptures. It's not, it's not a particularly but, strong line but, that all the Bible knew something before we developed the No, it, it, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that, I don't rest my faith on that. I'm just pointing out to you, it is in evidence. Multiple evidences point in the same direction. The spark of life, the ordering of chaos, the fact that Genesis spoke about them at a time when Bronze Age man could not possibly have known. But he did. You are sounding like a Muslim. Yeah. Right. Hold on one second. You know that's not Making true. Making spurious. That's like not that. true. Making spurious. You, 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 you stabbed me, Steve. My Bible says this. You stabbed me. This. Oh, you stabbed me in my true. heart. It's got to be true. So, so my point to you is, my point to you is, that we, we look at the world, and we see that the world points to a creator. And one of the evidences of that is the idea of contingency. Now, your argument was, well, what if it's infinite? But my point to you is, that if it is infinite, you lose the concept of time. But then I brought up the ruler. Yes. To have an infinitely long ruler doesn't stop you moving along the but ruler. But where can you start? So you're, so you're it doesn't matter. How does, that, how does that impact whether you can move along something, the argument of where it starts? Because if the ruler is infinite, how do you move along something that's always infinite? Because, because I arrived at this point on the ruler. Yeah. Or I arrived at this point of time. There's no, there's no argument to say right. it can't be but, infinite but in what, either direction. But Steve, what that indicates to you is that the ruler is not infinite. Why not? Because you can arrive on a measure yeah. at a point in time does not prove it can't be infinite at the other end. Because, Why? because Why? if you arrive at a certain point, yes. yeah, because we're talking about time, yeah. if you arrive at a certain point... I'm still going to bring out the ruler. Yeah, yeah. And then you move in time. Yes. It means that time is contingent. And contingency can't be infinite. Exactly, time is relative. So you're arguing you can't have rel relativity. No, I the believe scale in relativity. That has infinity. You 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 or cannot you cannot have if you have infinite if you have infinite space time you can't have relative space time. Why not? Because I'm failing to grasp. Maybe I'm dumb. I'm failing to grasp that argument. But because because time, if it is infinite, you never get to the present. It's the same argument for that end of time as that end of time. Yeah, you're moving. So time's going to end. Yes, time's going to end. Time has to end. It has to end. It has not, to end. Not only is it, it has to. Yes, it has to. Like you're saying it's like a thing. Time isn't a thing. Well, no. Well, time, time, I mean, to the best, to the best of our knowledge, time, is, time and space are equivalent. So right here is also right now. So you're traveling both through time and space at this exact moment in time. Yeah, so you're traveling. 
you are a traveller. You're moving through this someone's dimension. Someone's going to bring up the TARDIS at some point. Yeah, someone's going to bring it. It might as well be you, Steve. <laughs> might as well be you. I wouldn't want to steal you from your heckling role. But my point to you is... I don't, I don't, am, I, am I failing to grasp a, a well-known principle here of saying you can't have a moving scale, be it time or measurement or distance, and infinity? How would you measure it? Centimetres, metres. Right, but that means it's not infinite. Why not? Because... Why cannot the centimetres go on infinitely in that direction or that direction? Because time and space are the same thing. We, I, mean, I mean, we could just sort of settle this argument. Just answer. Why? Because you can measure something in units. Yes. Can that thing that you're measuring in units not yeah. be infinite in one direction or other? So infinite space. units. So units so where is zero? zero what your units are? Well, you heard of minus one, minus two, minus three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but, but that goes on and on and on and on. But this, but this should tell you that that this idea of infinity is not something that is in this universe. Point to me anything in the created order that is infinite. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't know whether the whole existence of the universe. Okay. Is, is time bound or infinite? To the best of our knowledge, we might have some theories. To the best of our knowledge, our universe is expanding. To the best of our knowledge, our universe is expanding from a singularity. <laughs> so, in, to the best of our knowledge, what we conceive of as the great cosmos was at one time a singularity. But everything we're talking about doesn't apply to God. So there is something outside of all of this. Exactly, Steve. That's the point I'm making to you. Story. Is that for these things to make any sense at all, empirically it makes sense, philosophically it makes sense, to say that there is a non-contingent other to all the contingent being. Well, the problem with pantheism is that, that it, you've still got the problem of contingency. So if you say that everything in creation is God, you've still got to address the issue of contingency. That you are contingent on your parents, who are contingent on their parents, who eventually are contingent upon some kind of microorganism that evolved at some point in the sea that sparked into life from from how from chemistry that just came together and became living is it just not self self-aware it's just the, the, the nature of existence is it is inevitable well, well this is the point this is it's the point right? the, the, the nature of existence the, the nature of existence isn't Inevitable. But we have no reason know to know non-being, right? You cannot know non-being. It's impossible. Uh, uh, well, I mean, agreed. Knowledge, knowledge would presume um, being. There's only being. But but There's being. Only. But that's my point. All being that we are aware of: the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth we're standing on, the atoms that make us up. They're all contingencies, yes. and that contingency can't be infinite. So can I ask: Is my is my soul contingent? Yes, it was created. Right, so when I die, following your, your belief, yeah. my soul leaves my physical body and it yeah. goes one of two places. Uh, my understanding was that it's then there forever and it lives forever. Is that not true? My soul comes to an end. You said everything comes to an end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm of the when opinion... My soul wait, wait, wait. My, 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 my opinion... My, I, am of the opinion that, my, I am of the opinion that souls are burned into destruction in hell. And in heaven? They live eternity with God. Oh, so the soul is a contingent thing that can live forever. Great, this is brilliant, right, yeah, Steve. Because, no, 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 because now, now we come back to your very first question. Right, we Christians believe in a doctrine of, that we call theosis. Okay? That a bit like osmosis. Yeah. It is this idea, this idea, it, it is this idea that at the incarnation, God allows our human nature to be partakers in the divine nature. So the contingent chooses to become non-contingent. The, the, the contingent, yes, by its choices, becomes, be, allows itself to, to be drawn into the divinity and to be a partaker oh, is, of a I'm divine sorry, attribute, I'm gonna get a which is eternal life. Now, but that sounds ridiculous. Because you've, everything you've argued now Why is it ridiculous? goes out the window. Because you're saying everything's, I, everything's contingent except for God. I then asked you, are souls contingent? You yep. said they are. They're created. But, but now you've said, but they can if, go if on your living. soul ends up in the right place, it becomes non-contingent. So miraculously No, 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 changes. sorry. Let me rephrase this. It's not, that they don't have a, let me, it's not that they don't have a beginning. So they're always contingent. 
but their being is allowed to continue because they have be become a partaker of the divine nature. Don't they have that at the beginning though? Isn't the soul Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though, that, no, no, the beginning. souls are not created. But isn't the breath of God goes into the body, right? And then animates the body. Yeah, that's what the Bible is saying about the, them being think, created. But always, that, that breath is, is the first cause though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a so metaphor it's, of God creating so the, the soul. the soul is contingent. So it's yeah, soul, that's yeah. what I'm saying. The soul is... But it can last forever. Yeah, contingent means that your, your being is dependent on something else. But you also say it means that it's infinite. But no, no, something that is contingent can be eternal. But something. Well, that's your whole, I thought the whole argument about the ruler was that it can't be. No, the, the ruler, the ruler can't the be time, infinite. Order. Time can't be infinite. How can someone not be though? That's the, that's the tricky one for me. The non-being. So if they're destroyed in, you know, if some go to heaven and some are destroyed in hell, they don't know about non-being. There's no knowledge of it. They, there's no. Yeah, the knowledge is destroyed. Yeah, so they will never have the experience of being destroyed. They cannot know it. Well, no, they they have been destroyed. So, but they cannot know that. If I if I if I tear this book up, that. if I tear this book up and destroy it, if I burn it in fire and reduce it to ash, it will still be atomic and it still exists. Yeah. In another form. yeah, but 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 the book no longer exists. Yes, but this, but the, the essence of the book is still atomically. The the can't destroy energy. The, the book is present. The inf the, within material terms. Within material terms, I agree, you cannot destroy nor create energy or matter. They simply transfer from one to the other. We're both in agreement. We're both in agreement. But you've still got the issue of contingency. Well, yeah, it could, but it's in another form. It doesn't matter. That, yeah. that those atoms will get breathed in by someone, a pregnant mother, for yeah, example. Yeah, 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 Creation is not infinite. Is the soul not energy then? Is it not a form of energy? It's, it's not a, it's, outside of it's, an energetic it, it's, a, it's a metaphysical existence. It's, um, it's a metaphysical it, but existence. But this, is, this is the crux. Non-being. It, it's impossible. Non-being is impossible. Why is it impossible? Because you can't know it. The, the, you're making... You're making well, one tricky. second. No, you're following a fallacy because you're saying that, you you're, you're, that being is contingent upon knowledge. But that depends upon who's the knower. I am always the knower. You're not always going to be the knower. I have to be. Did you know before you were born? No. Did you know you were did you know yourself before you were born? All I've known is to be. So you don't know yourself before you were born. I did I am only I've only lived. Did your parents know a time when you didn't exist? Uh, did my parents know a time when I didn't exist? I've always existed. No, that's not my question. Yeah, but I can't this, this is a Do your parents know a time when you didn't exist? Did my parents let me think about that. Do my parents know a time? Uh, well, who am I then in that case? That's but not my question. Yeah, no, but that's my answer. <laughs> that's my answer to your question. Who am I? Well, who am I? In terms of an exist, but but but, but that doesn't. I, in, no offense. Can you know not being? The sophism is sophism. Yeah, know, sophism yeah. is not a response to the question. The but question is, good did your parents? It's a it's 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 a clever sounding answer, but it's not an answer. Did your parents know a time when you didn't exist? But, uh, the character of who I am as a name, a being, a named being. Yes. Right. So your parents yeah. didn't. The, your parents knew a time when you didn't exist. Like the character of me, the physicality. Of and me, this is why. I've always existed. And this is why. And this is why being is not contingent on knowledge. Contingent on knowledge. Yeah, but I, I don't think you. Knowledge is contingent on being. Not, can you not, can you experience non-being? Yeah, but but that's that's making existence right. contingent on knowledge. Existence, I'm saying it's the other way around. Is Be, always knowledge always. is contingent on being, not the other way around. Knowledge is contingent on being. Knowledge. What, um, I don't know. I just can't see the. I can't. I, I don't quite get that. As you don't quite get my. No, I get it. I just I just think it's nonsense. So you think you can experience non-being? I am saying that no, there was a time when you did not exist. No, but I'm not, what is, who am I? I answer then that question. Oh, do, do you believe in it? Do you, do you believe that you're the only being in existence? The only being. I believe uh, there is eternal being and it, it, whatever it, form it takes is always going to be being. So you think that we're all one? Ultimately, yes. Right, okay. Okay, I get it. So it, it is a kind of pantheism? Yeah. Yeah. Right, now I understand where you're coming from. Now, That's what I observe. That's not a belief system. I only see one moment. There's yep. one moment 
divided into the many, and that's observable. It's not a belief. I can see it. Yeah. Because there's only it's one. A, it's a narrative that you superimpose upon it. Oh, no, I see it. I experience it. This I'm experiencing it now. This is happening. There's one moment, and there's many, many perspectives within that moment. Yeah, but I'm a different being to you. Yes, but we still share the moment, don't we? We, sh yeah, we share the cells well, in your left hand are different to the cells in your right hand. Well, actually, I mean, if you want to get really technical about it, there is a, 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 a and I'll use the sun as an example. Yeah. We're experiencing the sun now, but the, the, what we're seeing is eight minutes old. Yeah, I understand. You know, and, and even though it's imperceptible, there is a, a fraction in time between you speaking and me hearing. Yeah. Okay, so these, the, so from a physical point of view, we are not experiencing the same moment. From a physical okay. point of view, we are experiencing two different moments. The moment of you speaking and the moment of me hearing. No, That's no. the illusion of time within the moment. Uh, for me, the time divides within itself. So time is illusion. Yes, ultimately. I would say this. Okay, say you left someone this morning uh, and you say goodbye to them, right? And you come here. Now, in your mind, you can remember that, right? It happened in your head. And you can be, when you visualise that person, it will be a memory of maybe you walking out the front door and saying goodbye. And that gives the illusion of something that happened in the past. But that person is here, is present here, over there maybe, or wherever, maybe 10 miles in that direction. They're always present. Yeah. Everything is always present. That's how I understand it. Well, I mean, you, 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 you have a problem with thermodynamics because that would contradict you completely. And, and I, I agree with maybe the physics. I, 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 no offence. What's your name, bro? Alex. Alex, I mean this in the nicest possible way, but it is going to be a put down. You're essentially just practicing sophism. But the, 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 the illusion, the illusion, but you're, the, you're, well, no, 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 the rhetoric is sophism. But you're right, maybe the philosophy, but his philosophy is, his philosophy is pantheism. So the past, the past, look at your photos from your parents, that's the past. Yeah, but it's the past, show bro. Me yesterday. Is it exactly? Show me yesterday. Yes, a week. I can show you ten minutes ago oh, via film. Via film, but you yeah. can't actually go there. You can't go back in time. So no, but we've captured it in history. You, yeah, but that's the film you're looking at, not the, not the moment. And this is why it's sophism. It's just word plays. I think you, okay. How anything can ever change. I'm or not saying the only thing that doesn't. Do, do you believe that you're subject to corruption and change? Uh, yes, there's movement within within the moment. It's, this is the thing. For me, there's an all an overarching presence that you would call God, right? It's the one, and the one divides within itself. No. Not out, that's the only difference. You say that one creates something outside of itself. For me, yes. it's just, I don't see that. And and and, and because I observe what is. G.K. Chesterton wrote on exactly your ideas. Nothing is, not G G G Nothing is but what is not. Nothing is but what is not. G.K. Chesterton wrote on your ideas. And for me, this is, this is why Christianity allows us to have a superior ethic than this oneness ethic. Are you sure? No, yes, absolutely. And, and the reason why is because love demands another. Love demands someone who is truly other to be loved. You see, if we are truly other, if we are true, amen. If we are truly other from one another, if we are truly other from one another, then we can truly love. Your idea is that really I'm just loving myself when I love you, and that is the height of a selfishness. I think I think I think there are many levels to consciousness, and we're, you're operating on a specific frequency or idea of consciousness, and dismissing other levels of awareness. And that works for you, I understand that. And that's not to say it's incorrect. And are you on a higher level no. of... Uh, yeah, are you on a higher just, level? I'm just saying that there are other levels. And how, how, how did you arrive at this conclusion? I'm Observation? Not, I'm not, yes. Right. I, so, I'm looking at what is. Yeah. You're, looking at, you're looking at what you wish to be. No, scientists also look at what is. And they would agree with me, not you, that time is real. Sure that's true. They yeah, would. they would. They would. They would. So times don't. So scientists don't believe in thermodynamics. Dynamics. They don't believe in thermo thermodynamics. That's not your whole. I'm saying it's subject to corruption and change. No, no. So the what is? No, that is what I'm saying. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm saying that he's subject to corruption and change. Just by saying corruption, it's loaded. No, it, that, that's are you talking about entropy. It's, uh, that's exactly what thermodynamics. What's wrong yes, with decay? Decay is. is so, do you agree with thermodynamics? <laughs> um, I, yeah. Entropy, yeah. Entropy, right. Yeah. So, do you do you agree that you're subject to corruption well, and change? Everything comes. Yeah, uh, everything atoms fall into intelligence as they decay. They reform into. That's stars the arrow of time. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could say no, 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 no. That, that is the arrow of time. That is exactly what the arrow of time is. One thing. There is no time. Thermodynamics. This is a scientific phrase, bro. I know. But what you oh, so you do? So I'm not wrong then to say that this is the arrow of time. It, it, it's a, a very narrow perspective on what you're saying. First of all, when you said if you love him, it's to 
a selfish love because you're loving him. What I would say is if you harm him, it's a foolish harm because we are one. That's so, the, so the opposite. I, so are you also a pantheist? I'm a non-dualist. A non-dualist. So you believe in metaphysics, metaphysical realities. I same belief. This is so you you guys have the, the same belief. The I want to. I just want to make consciousness sure. Consciousness is the only reality. Because I, I might end up end having two different arguments. No, no, no. Consciousness so consciousness is the only reality. The only reality. Yeah. Okay, right. So conscious. And it's an infinite awareness. So so a stone is not a real thing. What you uh, what what uh, what's your uh, definition of real? Uh, 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 <laughs> What is my definition of real? Yeah. Something that I can e e experience and encounter. Experience and encounter. Yeah. So uh, everything that you can't experience and encounter is, is unreal, or what you're saying? Anything that I can't experience or encounter is unknown. Like your soul. No, I, I can experience my soul. Okay, but the, the issue about reality is if you look at uh, what is a, a stone made of? Atoms. Atoms. What's below? What's what atoms made of? Poor, uh, oh, Philippine egg. Quarks. Quarks, muons, up, down, yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah. So what are they made of? Um, well, we don't know that. Fields. Well, no, that's string theory, and that's a hypothesis. No, it's not string theory. It no. String, yeah. theory, string theory. I mean, we could get into a debate about physics, but I'm just saying that there is that's, no that's a theory. in the reality of a stone to you or to anything else. In no, fact, there is a no, difference. No. And if you were to can, look at, can, were can to, a stone you, have this conversation with you? If you were to observe the stone microscopically, can a stone have this conversation? Electronic mic, ele, 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 electron microscope. <laughs> if you if you observe it, observe it. Yeah, 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 What yeah. are you actually finding? You said you'll, you have to observe it to be able for it to be real. Yeah. But if you were to able to put, can your I finger, touch a stone? To be able to put your finger on. Can I chuck a stone? If you want to make it a very simple uh, argument of, but it really of is a level, simple of O level physics. But it really is that physics. simple. No, it's not. Because the reality is that a stone and me are not the same thing. I'm a conscious being. I have knowledge. Yeah, but you're contingent a upon stone. the rock of the earth, aren't you? I'm contingent upon atoms, there's a, there's yes. There's a slime mold of consciousness there, right? A slime mold, not to my knowledge. So, so, so out for you... I doubt it. For you, what in your life has... Is there anything that has never changed? You know, talking about entropy, so your body changes, your thought changes, your emotions changes, and your beliefs change. Well, is there anything that hasn't changed? God does not change. No, no, in you. In you. Oh, in me. It's your experience. In, your in experience. me. In me. In your experience. In my experience or in me? Because those are two different questions. So I'll have to answer them separately because those are two separate questions. In me, everything has changed. Everything has changed. Yeah. But God has not changed. So there's nothing that has never changed in you. In me, no. Yeah. Everything so has changed in me. There is one thing that has never changed. Which is? I will go. I will explain. Well, I will try to explain. There, there is one thing that hasn't changed. And let's see if you agree with me. You may disagree. Okay. So as you grew up, little um, five-year-old boy. Um, what was your experience of the world? What did you experience? Thoughts, feelings, mum, you know, parents, family, the outside world, yep. the emotional world, yep. the psychological world. Yep. Yeah? Yep. That's what you experienced. Yep. What experienced those things? Well, me at the time. No, who's me though? Are we talking about consciousness? We're talking about perception, awareness. So it's yeah. the awareness. The self. No, no, well, it depends. De saying the self, it can be defined in lots of different ways. I know it can. But if we talk about infinite awareness or awareness, it's awareness being aware of thoughts, feelings, body, outside world, inside world. But that awareness, I think you would agree, has never changed in you. That, he agrees. That, no, I, no, I, fair I, enough. I, I, you, well, if, no, no, I would say I disagree because my myself, when I was born, my, I was short-sighted. In fact, we all were. When, when, when we're born, we're short-sighted. We can hear before we can, we can speak. Our, our interaction with the world um, is something that is dependent upon our senses, is dependent upon our consciousness, and, and my view of the consciousness is that it is essentially the tentacles of an octopus. The real self is much deeper than what we perceive as the consciousness being. 
I know, it's why I'm single. The real but like, it's, 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 it's you, you know, you're never going to chat up a girl with that line, Steve. <laughs> oh, Trust know, me, I've tried. I mean, I, Do you know, love, I'm that gonna... your conscious self is really just the tentacles of your inner being? I think, I think look, you try to do the definitions when you talk about real self, real and self and all these different things because otherwise it will just get a bit kind of uh, round. So what, what are you saying? I'm, I'm, my argument is that the awareness of yourself Changed. is the thing that hasn't and never changed. No, I, I disagree. So you're, you're a, you are an awareness and you're aware of those things when you were, it, even before okay. you were yeah. born. It was obs it's observably false and I'll show you why. Uh, no, it's observably false. It's observably false. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate why it's observably false. I mean, you may have children, you may not. But if you have children, just remember back to when they were one and two and they discover their own foot and they try to stick their foot in the mouth. Because a child in its earliest form tries to explore the mouth through its sense of taste. It's why they stick everything in their mouth. You, you, you know, it's one of the cutest things in the world to watch a baby who's just discovered toes. So, the, so they're not aware. No, no. Where awareness develops. No, no. I think you. I think you mean conscious, cognitive understanding is different from awareness. Um, if you look at a dog. No, I don't no, think those you, things are separate. If you, if you think a dog, right? Yeah. Does a dog have awareness? Yes. And what is it aware of? It's aware of itself. Aware of what? What is itself? It's aware of its body. It's aware of its body. It's aware of its thoughts. It's aware of other bodies. Of its cognitions, of its smells, of its senses. Yeah, it's aware of other bodies. So it's that awareness that I'm talking about. Yeah, but that awareness is contingent upon the senses. So no, no, I think I think the argument you're making is that you need the brain and the body to have the consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. But the issue is is that it Without means, brain and body there is no consciousness. But the 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 Is that wrong? Without and brain no, yeah, I was you're in wrong. soul. Yeah. You talk about so soul you're saying you can have consciousness without in either brain or body. Can yes. you give me an example? A dream. Can you a dream. Is in the brain. Okay. So the, the you do know. Wait, wait. No, no, you do, you do know we've we we've scanned yeah, we've yeah. scanned human beings having dreams. We know that it's an activity of the my, brain. My argument is uh, is that the, the, there's the super consciousness made, which which is this representative reality that we have, and then there's microcosms of consciousness that are limited in their perception via limited by their senses and their brain so you only see you don't see ultraviolet light or you, know, you don't see certain uh, aspects of light yeah it's not that they're not there we're limited by our body mind and and experience but don't you see how that demonstrates that existence is separate from consciousness what you sorry say again existence is separate from consciousness no. ultraviolet light is there whether we're conscious of it or not that's, that's, that doesn't make a broad argument uh, one way or the other. Because uh, remember, what I'm saying to you guys, and I'm, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop, because I'm tired. But, but and, and also, like, for me, it's kind of like, I don't see this conversation progressing much. But for me, one of the key differences between my position and your position, as I understand it, is that I'm saying that consciousness is dependent on being. If I understand your position you properly, being if I, 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 existing, if yeah, it, yeah. what you're saying is that being is existent, is dependent well, upon consciousness. Is consciousness? Well, the consciousness is the froth of the brain. It is the tentacles of the octopus. I'm not talking about I would consciousness. Say consciousness. I'm talking about light. That's the background for me. And, and I just see this. That's, that's, I mean, light energy. It, that's, to me, that's, 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 consciousness. Is, you'll make it for me. It's a. An it's, event. It, it's, and it, 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 everything that comes from the sun has made our bodies atomic. Agreed. Every, you know, photons, uh, yeah. great particles down yeah, to light yeah. waves. I, I, I consciousness agree. for me is light in various manifestations, is a boundless presence that can make whatever it wants. You know, the Bible, you know the Bible describes God as light? Yes. Have you got a Bible? I agree with that. I agree. If you want to call God light, that works for have me. You, have, and therefore God is consciousness. Have you, have you, yes, absolutely, God is being. But, but I, for me, God, the light, bricks itself up in form to know itself. That's the difference. That's pantheism versus theism. Yeah, but the problem with that, the pro there's multiple problems with that. Well, Firstly, yeah, the multiple... What divides to make... Well, the, divides, the multiple problems with that, yeah. uh, to name but two, is one, with light, right? is one, you know is that? one, <laughs> is one, that ultimately this is uh, an ethic for self-love and selfishness. And, and the idea of disappearing, and, and the idea of disappearing into your own mind, solipsism. 
the other the other problem the other the other the other problem the the other problem the other problem the other problem the other problem is that it has zero explanation for contingency or thermodynamics so I want to show you something. If I and I be single, you should be filled with light. That's uh, an interesting passage, right? Let, let, about singularity, the one. Yeah, I want to show you something. Because because what I'm trying to show you is my position. You, you, my you're, my you're position. Christian, yeah. So this is why I believe so firmly yeah, cool. that knowledge is contingent on being. God said in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13, Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Yes. Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Okay. So knowledge is contingent on being. I would say that I am is always, right? It's never been born, never will die. Is, Correct, right? yes, yeah. yes. Right, I would say that all that partakes of existence partakes of that. Except that all the evidence demonstrates the opposite. So you, you, you thought this was a, a problem of uh, non-dual uh, perspective that we're taking. However, with a dual, dualistic view, not only do you have the physical and the spiritual as separate... Let, let I don't have a dualistic view like that. Uh, well, you're saying that the rock is separate to the spirit. I'm saying that the rock doesn't have a... is separate, is different to me. I don't think that's a controversial statement. Are you saying it's separate from the spirit? I, I am saying... Could you tell me it was made out of rock before? Yes. The, okay. So, no, what I said was, yeah. and let's be clear, okay. what I said was that I am not the same thing as the rock. Right, so that's a separation. Then. Yeah. So you've got the rock and separate for you. Yeah. With a non-dual perspective, there is no separation. Yeah. But what the... Uh, and the why are you talking to me? <laughs> you need to let me finish. Um, if, you, if, if you go along with your religion to its uh, highest degree, you're going to have the ultimate duality of a heaven and a hell. Uh, and whilst you're in heaven, lording it up and saying, well, I was so great at speaking to and everything, um, all your loved ones and many other spirits are going to be burning in hell well, forever. Well, they're destroyed, aren't they? Like well, I mean, people have different beliefs about that. Yeah, it's true. But this is the kind of dual, dualistic kind of end that can come at the extremes of one's view. And ultimately, also, if God is all-powerful, how do you have a universe that is outside of that power? Uh, you know, because then it's like, well, if you've got the sun or, or any of us having some power, then, then God doesn't have all the power. So one of, one of, one of, one of the, the uh, and this really must be my end, um, next time JC comes back, we'll have to there stop no abruptly. End, so in one of well, <laughs> well time, no time, would, time, 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 well, time, would no time would suggest otherwise. Time would suggest otherwise. Time would time would suggest otherwise. Otherwise, and so would entropy. You're all going to die, guys. It's a fact. There will be a point at which you cease to exist. That is a reality. And you have to face that ultimate reality, that you are going to die. The body, the, the, body, the, the personality dies. Thank you. The infinite so that's awareness, an is, which is what we all are. But, but that Never infinite dies. awareness is a non-observable thing. And, and here's my other problem. And here's my other problem. And here's my other problem. Many. Here's my, o and here's my other problem. Here's my other problem. You've just experienced them. Here's, here's my, here's my other problem. Is that all of this is just your conjecture? No, it's not. Has God spoken to you? Has this being spoken to you? Has he revealed himself to you? Can I give you a quick? Everyone has that. Is your interpretation of how you interpret it? Can I have a quick? You're looking at words and saying this is the truth. Are you, do, you, do you agree with him? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Are you all part of the oneness brigade? No, but brother, it's because you're looking in your own direct experience. Why did you call me brother? Because I respect the dualistic experience too. No, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm not offended by it. I'm just oh. pointing out that the fact that you call me brother acknowledges oh, that we're not the same. No, 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 no. no. On the dualistic um, level, of course, there's difference. We need difference, otherwise there's no experience at all. I mean, that's it's why, that's why the dualistic it is it is actually observable that we are not the same. No, but they're, they're no, single, like we're literally the talking single, to one another. The moment there's itself only one moment, is what exactly. The I mean, you can say what you can say. There's only one moment, as much as you like. But the reality is 
we have just passed through time and no, you've no, all no, experienced no, no. it. How, how long have you been since finger was talking to this finger, they, they might think they're very separate, but they're not, are they? The the fingers don't the talk, bro. People talk. They, I think that's a, a flexibility of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. If they yeah. think. So, okay. But the, the, so the other thing is, is that like in your belief, in your seven minutes, in your belief, you need a time? foot in and a person. In fact, I would say, and you, these guys might agree, that actually Jesus probably had this kind of belief uh, in, in his teachings anyway. His but that, that is uh, maybe, maybe corrupted, I don't know. But if, if your belief is that you need a book and a person to tell you about reality, then that causes a big problem for you exactly. across the universe and across time when actually, you know, you can be fooled by the, by the uh, kind of human mind. Both in the, the, the problem of it is that you get into a dualist, dualistic argument with yourself and with other people when actually, you know, that the whole religions could be explained by other things, but, but infinite awareness cannot, is, 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 is the truth. This kind of, ag again, again, this kind of sophism. Of it's this, 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 this sophism means that you, you, you are the only, uh, it's a different version. I know, I'm not, I'm not saying solopsism. I'm not saying solopsism. I'm saying sophism. It is, it is just wordplay. When you, when you encounter observable reality What's the source that, of that we 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 i am the observer yeah what is that i am it ain't your eye what is that i am i am that my my observation is not your observation what is that i am that's perceiving right now myself what is that yeah it's my consciousness my consciousness yes now, so what is it what is it my consciousness my, my, my it is it is my being your being which is not yours what is your being my it's, being it's is one, my existence. Your, your existence yeah so existence itself at what so point does it split itself it doesn't split itself. Oh, so we're the same. No, no, hold on one second. You're just, you're just randomly connecting no, randomly. sentences just together. I have just itself. said, no, I said that my existence doesn't split itself. But if you'd listened carefully to what I said, I maintained the idea that there is a distinction between my existence and your existence. Depends what you mean by my. You haven't explained what this I am is. Uh, 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 my existence is my observation of the world. You are literally half a meter away from me. You are not the same. That which is perceiving. I am I am perceiving myself. The self is perceiving. What is the self? My consciousness. What is the consciousness? What my is my consciousness? my existence. Oh, I own my own consciousness. What is it, bro? Yeah. I've just tried look, sophism is no, isn't a response. Mean? What does that mean? You're just 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 word plays, no, it's a guys. Question that you're not asking me. You're just saying you're saying repeatedly. It's my because mind. because what is consciousness? That's my well, question. For you. Consciousness is the tentacles of the octopus. What? It is the it is the tentacle. Consciousness is the tentacles of the deeper self. Where did you read that? So what's the deeper? So there's something deeper than consciousness. Yes. What, and what is that? Your consciousness. This this thing that you perceive as consciousness. No, no, no. I think we've got it's a different before perception. Perception. Well, I, I, like, okay. So, so he asked me what my view of consciousness was. Yeah. He asked me what my view of consciousness was. My view of consciousness. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm going to stop, guys, because you know I'm, it's, it's just going round and round in circles. It's not really. You know, it's not exactly. It's consciousness. Not. Yeah, it's consciousness. Not. It's actually very good. But, but my 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 understanding, my understanding. No, really, you're not challenging me, honestly. Oh, I know. Like my yeah, my consciousness. My my. I've just told you, consciousness oh. is the tentacles of the deeper self. What does that mean? What's the deeper right, self? Right. Okay. The deeper poetry. the deeper self is that which makes the decisions. Decisions? Yes. So what's the way of those decisions? Your consciousness. So the consciousness is deeper than the deeper self then? No, the consciousness, <laughs> the conscious... Uh, look, brother, the, the, we've already... What you're saying? The, 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 we've, all, the, we've, already dis, we've already observed that people make decisions before they are aware of them. This has been observed, it's been well, scientifically it tested. It, 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 yes, but an awareness, a person who is self-aware will make decisions before they are conscious that they've made a decision. The consciousness is the tentacle of the deeper self. Your deeper self is that which makes the decisions. Your consciousness, your consciousness, your consciousness is the input output. The consciousness is the input output gate. What's that, that deeper self? How do they make decisions? That's your brain. Your brain is your deeper self. Yes, that's where your deeper self resides. So, no, so it's, it's not a decision engine. So it's not my decision. What's the way of the decision, decision engine? That's called the unconscious. It's a, a conditioned mind. The un Can you get JC? Sorry, I want to go. I don't, but I, I don't want to leave his camera. Or could you get his, grab his camera? Yeah, right. limited by Guys, it was lovely talking to you. It was lovely talking to you. You too, man. All right, until next time. Until next time. Lovely talking to you. Next time. Jesus, run away!
I, I just got tired of going round in circles. I got tired of going round in circles. Peace we. How we doing, bro? Good to see you. Loving that cross of St. Andrew. Loving the cross of St. Andrew. I'm off this week. I'm going to Scotland for one week. Okay. I'm back next Monday. I'll send you an email whenever you're free. Anytime. Yeah. I am back next week so we can we can try and arrange to meet up. Yeah, God willing.